Hello my stitching friends and welcome to another stitch with me. This chart is called Dreaming of Being a Human. It's the heaven and earth design and it's the one that I've been talking about starting for a few weeks now. Uh, so I'm actually really excited to have finally gotten around to starting it. And this is as far as I've gotten at the moment. Um, I have a little bit to talk to you about what happened when I started this chart. So basically I was thinking of doing um, diagonal rows and starting in the top right corner, as you can see. So I did about three diagonal rows and um, I don't know what happened, but as soon as it got a little bit more into the pattern and there was a bit more confetti, I suddenly started going wrong and I was losing count and um, I had to frog three different times. So it just kind of put me in a bad mood, so to speak. And I decided, you know, hell with this. I'm just going to go and carry on doing some rows along and kind of ignore that diagonal line that was going along down here. So, yeah, I mean, I've tried it. And the funny thing is, it works really well for me on a different chart. I didn't seem to have any problem on a different chart. And I think what happens is when it gets really confetti, I start to get confused, which, um, you know, can happen anyway, even if you're not doing diagonals. But, you know, I want to be comfortable when I'm stitching. So I've just for the moment gone back to doing some rows along and blocks. I don't have issues with lines or tension, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going back to doing the rows for the moment. And if at some point down the line, I feel like starting another diagonal, I probably will. Um, you know, the good thing is that I can swap and change if I want to. I don't have to stick to the same method every single time. So anyway, I'm going to do a bit of stitching today. And at the moment, I've done just under 1%, which isn't too bad. Um, I was expecting to get a lot less done in a couple of days because I actually had guests over. So it's actually a bit of a surprise that I did get as much done as I did. Um, sometimes I stay up a little bit later, you know, when people have gone to bed and I do a little bit of stitching then. And I think it's nice because it's quiet. There's nobody around to bother you or to make you, um, you know, have to get up or interrupted. So a lot of these colours now are very uh, light. And I was wondering if I'd used the slightly darker fabric, would it have been easier to see the stitches? But in pure daylight, it's really, really easy to see these stitches. Not so much at night time, where you do need good strong lighting, a nice good lamp. And I'm doing four crosses with one strand. And this is, if anybody has only just come to this video, I'm using a 20 count um, even weave in antique white. Uh, I did do a video last week where I was talking about going down to 20 count from my normal 22 or 25 count and having a go with that. And it's absolutely a dream to work. Not a problem for me whatsoever. Really nice and smooth. Not scratchy at all. Do not like really uh, scratchy fabrics. But sometimes using a blunted needle can help with that as well. So I don't really know what kind of method I'm going to stick with with this chart. Um, that's the funny thing. I kind of started on the diagonal and then I thought, now oh, I'm going to change and then I'll probably change again. But I think that's part of the fun of doing your charts is that you can sort of divert and be a little bit um, imaginative, creative. I mean, nothing's set in stone. We don't all have to follow rules. There are no rules, which is what I like the best. So now to go back and do this in rows means having like a big gap in the middle here, because normally I would have followed this diagonal down. But since I've decided to now do a few blocks, we are uh, diverting and creating a really interesting shape. 
Now the little blue squares, if you're wondering, are just little dots I have placed at the corner of each square. I don't need the whole line to be highlighted, but the dots kind of help as a grid. And yes, they do wash off. I'm kind of running out of this um, thread here, so I'm going to finish this stitch. Which I have had no problem doing by bringing that thread down and just basically snipping it, not quite at the hole, but just slightly in front of the hole and like that it gets covered up at the back. So this pattern looks like such a dream to stitch. Um, I just, the thing is I just want to carry on with it now and keep going and not exactly work on any others, which is probably not ideal. <laughs> now I'm going to do teeny weeny waist knot somewhere about here because that's going to get covered up. And I've oh, chosen a really long thread. Actually, I prefer my threads to be a little bit shorter because then they don't um, tangle up. For some reason, I've cut this one pretty long. I mean, the ease in which this w is working for me at the moment compared to two strands is so much easier to get one strand through than it is to get two. But I do also like the effect of two strands. So it really does depend on what kind of look you're going for. If you're looking for a more tapestry feel with a more a thicker kind of layer at the top, then you would go for two strands but if you want a smoother, flatter appearance, one strand really does do that well. So I've been working on a few different charts um, these past few days. I got working on my London chart, which has a lot of backstitch, but I'm doing the backstitch as I go along because I find it easier, you know, psychologically to tackle it when it comes to finishing the actual chart. I do not like to have a whole chart full of crazy backstitch to have to complete. So I'm doing uh, that chart page by page and I'm finishing the backstitch on the page that I've just done and then moving on to the next. And I find like you feel that there's an actual finish when you do that, as opposed to having completed your cross stitch design and then having realized that it isn't really finished, you have to go back and do all the back stitch. <laughs> I'm just marking this off in pattern keeper. So we are at just about a thousand stitches in total on this chart already. It doesn't look like that much, does it, for a thousand stitches, but that's what we have. Okay. So what did I do um, apart from stitching? Well, we had uh, a family member stay in the last couple of days. So we've been out and about a bit more than usual, which is why I'm saying I was surprised that I actually got this uh, started and done when you've got company and you're kind of distracted and don't really have time to yourself to stitch. And um, what date? was yesterday on Monday I went to Holyrood Palace which is so so close to where I live I can't believe I live like six minutes drive away from a palace <laughs> it just seems so bizarre but anyway I went to this 
palace and I had a good look around inside and everything is so beautiful. A grand staircase, beautiful furnishings and tapestries on the walls, absolutely massive tapestries on the walls, chandeliers, dining rooms. I mean, you could just literally close your eyes and take yourself there back to the medieval period when everything was so ornate and they would play that kind of medieval music. And you do kind of go off into a little fantasy of your own, actually. So that was a really novel experience. And it was empty as well, because at the time of year that it is, we don't have a lot of tourists there, or maybe I just was lucky, picked a good time of day, and managed to get into the rooms where they were completely empty. And you could really feel the heaviness of the place, like you could tell it had been around for so many years, that it wasn't light and fresh and airy like a new building. It, there was tons and tons of atmosphere. So that was my excursion that I really enjoyed and I'll probably go back again because you always miss something. You can't take everything in on one visit. So I will go back again and check it out. Now I'll probably finish this square and then move on to the square on the right. I'll try and square this off actually, because I'm finding it more comfortable to work like this. Especially when I, um, I'm tired or it comes to the late at the end of the day and you just want to relax and you don't want to be bothered counting too much. And I haven't actually had that problem that some people have said to me they've had when they go from doing 10 stitches to full cross, they sometimes forget to finish the, the full cross because they're used to only doing half a stitch. And I can imagine that that would be the case when you are used to uh, 10 stitching and then you might just forget to finish the second leg, which I can imagine would be really frustrating, right? When you finished a whole square, or a whole block and then you find there's the one stitch in the middle that need, you need to go back and cross. That must be frustrating. Now, where am I going? I've got to go to the end of this row. So I like to stitch nice and relaxed and easy don't like to rush and I don't like to worry about which direction I'm going too much. I'm just doing one stitch after the other which is really quite relaxing. Oops, I have gone down the wrong hole. And I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of working the lighter stitches because I suppose you can see that they can be a bit of a challenge. Um, especially if you're not paying attention, you can get confused as to which colors which. But I think by now I'm so used to working on these designs and various colors and tones that my eyes kind of adjust and I have got used to these different shades. Now, one, two, three, up, down. So the issue with parking is sometimes if you're doing, if you're going over that row that you're doing, you're gonna hit the, the park threads underneath and you're gonna to have to be a little bit careful you don't actually stitch over them if you're trying to go into that hole. Now I can park this on the next row. And that's one colour finished there. 
and I did that stitch there because I just like to double check that I have actually done the stitches that I need to do before I move on to doing another one. You know, it is always easier to work the, the strands at the bottom. So you pick up the bottom one, work it, then pick up the one above and work it. And that actually helps you get less of a muddly mess. So which one am I going to do? That's the bottom row. This, this line here is the first row of the next square. That's it. That dot is the first row of the next square below. So I've got two rows that need stitches in, stitches in before I get to that first row. Let's go and just work nice and easy. And I think it's going to be a little while before I, I reach the face of this pattern, the lady's face where the colours will get darker as we go along. Again, I've come to a point where I already have a strand So I'm not exactly going cross country, I'm just working within, whoops, something happened there, You've got a little teeny weeny knot, sometimes if you just pull on that little knot, it'll disappear. Not exactly working cross country, just filling in a few areas within that little block. Park this one. So far, so good. Then I'm going to work. So these three strands I can move out of the way for the moment. I'm going to work this one. really must remember to cut shorter strands. I don't actually need them to be this long. I think it's just force of habit because what I used to do was cut a strand pretty long and then fold it over so that I could do a loop start. And I kind of haven't gotten out of that habit. So even though I'm just using a single strand that I don't need to fold over, I'm still cutting it fairly long. Force of habit, you see, once you get into these habits of things, it's very difficult to kind of snap out of it. Because a lot of stuff we do, we kind of do on autopilot without even realizing that we're doing it on autopilot, but we are. I'm really, really enjoying this pattern at the moment. I love the way all these like slightly little pinks and beige colors are blending together. And to be honest, I can actually see the colors a lot better on a higher count than I can when I'm using 25 count because the stitches are so small. If one of the stitches is pulled too hard, it goes deeper into the canvas and I don't see the colour as well. But in this um, count, it's not too big and it's not too small. It's just a really sweet size. Those stitches are great. When you put them further away up in the wall, you won't even see, really. I love the texture of it. It looks really tidy as well. So I have nothing to s but good stuff to say about 20 count at the moment. It is the perfect in-between count, I think. 
But if you're going for a more, um, a, a much smoother look still, you might go up to 25 or 28 where you could barely see the stitches. But I'm really liking that I can actually see them because I can appreciate the changes in the blends much more distinctly because I can see each stitch much better because it's slightly bigger, even slight, slightly bigger than the 22 count, which I love. So this is a perfect count in many ways, but again, it depends on your taste and what you're looking for. What is it you like? Um, there is no question that people love 28 and even higher counts, which is absolutely fine if that's the look you're going for. There is no problem. And they come out majorly impressive, like almost like printouts. If you put something up on a wall, having done it on 28 count or above, it looks like a photographic printout. Very, very impressive. But I can't uh, sort of manage 28 count. I struggle with tiredness. Well, actually, when I'm tired, I can't see the holes very clearly. It gets very bulky. Um, unfortunately, as much as I'd love to do a 28 count piece, I don't want to be bothered with magnifiers and stuff. I just want an easy, an easy stitch. Don't want to complicate my life. It's already bad enough that I have to wear reading glasses to stitch. <laughs> which I never had to wear, obviously, some years ago. And that's enough for me. Although I do like to vary my methods a little bit now and then, because it keeps it interesting, I think, when you try different things, when you try new things out. I mean, I could just have easily have gone back and done 25 count on this, but you know, nothing's stopping you experimenting, trying a different count, trying different stitch. Um, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes you realize that you preferred the other way you were doing it. It just is good to try things out. Now there's actually two stitches in there I haven't done. Can you see them? I'd say these stitches are still quite small now to the um, person who doesn't actually cross stitch. But I'm going to leave those two in there for the moment because I don't want to waste time setting up one thread for each of them. And I'm gonna just move on to this area. There goes the early morning ambulance. And I'm going to start with this color, which again, I'm gonna to have to get a new strand very soon. So it's just as well, actually, that I don't have problem with tension lines um, or faint lines that you can see down the sides of my piece because that would really determine how I would stitch. I would not be able to do blocks, probably, unless I feathered a little bit, which I do occasionally feather. Um, But even then, I've noticed even on my other pieces that I don't get lines. So it's probably a combination of my tension and the fabric itself, how hard I'm pulling the thread. So 
So I'm just working. Instead of rows, I'm doing a little cross country inside the block, which is fine and not too cumbersome at the moment because there's not that much confetti in it. So it's not going to be a bother really to just keep going with this colour. This is looking good. I'm getting really into the flow and quite pleased with how this is coming out. I think I will finish a page in no time if I continue this way. Although I do want to get back to working on, um, I think the London chart that I was working on yesterday. Because I had put that one aside for a while and felt like it needed a little bit of attention. But I don't sort of feel that I have to rush any of my projects. I do kind of take it in my stride a little bit. And I also find once I really get into one of them, I don't often want to stop. And why would you, you know, because you're kind of enjoying the flow. I think this thread is coming near to the end. I think I can get a couple of more stitches in without it becoming unthreaded. So if I try to go right to the very last little bit of the thread, it'll just come off the needle anyway. And that's always a bit of a pain. Maybe I'll just finish that one there because I want to cut it off down the bottom. So I just leave the tiniest tip sticking out and I haven't had a problem with that at all. Um, so I'm actually going to get this colour and continue with that one. And again I'm going to start with a little knot just underneath my square because I'm going to cover it up very soon anyway. And then I will cut it off. When it's the case when there's like loads and loads of different colours, you really, um, I really actually prefer to work in rows because it's just a crazy mess. So I'll do one stitch, park, then the next stitch, park below, then the next stitch. And like that, I slowly get through them, but I get through them well. Rather than doing the one stitch, ending the thread, starting another thread, doing the next stitch, ending that thread, starting another thread, doing the next stitch, and that would be more tedious for me than doing the stitch, park, picking up the thread, putting it on the needle. Because you see, I, I thread the needle very, very quickly. It takes me less than a second to thread the needle, which is why the parking for me is not a difficult job. If you thread your needle within a second, how is it going to be a problem? Uh, something happened at the back where it gets a little stuck at the back. Sometimes carry on here. Get another few stitches done and then it will be time for a break. So 
So I don't think I'll be working on this chart daily, but I will definitely be putting a number of stitches a week. Um, I've got at the moment five heaven and earth designs and I don't actually want to add any more active charts to my um, rotation because there is only one of me, one pair of hands, and I literally cannot fit in anymore because I do want to get progress on the ones I'm doing. I want to continue getting progress. I don't really want to have hundreds of charts all waiting for my attention. That kind of would overwhelm me. Um, it's perfectly fine to have as many as you want, but I feel like I know what my limits are in terms of time and what I can do. And even with five charts, if I, for instance, work on one a week, that's still only getting one chart, work on one chart um, per month, one week per month, which isn't really that much again. So I do like continuing and getting to, I want to get to 50% on Sad Fairy, which I have put down for a while because I've been con concentrating on other ones. So I think she needs a bit of attention now. And I want to get to the 50% on her. Which if I do, um, a little bit more on her over the next few days. That might actually help me get there a lot quicker. It's not a race. We can take the time we want to take, but I do like to see, I do like to see progress on my charts. And I haven't been giving too much attention to my stitch along either this week, which I'm dying to get back to. I will probably, I was going to work on the stitch along this weekend, but I'll probably get back to it. Um, tomorrow night, I'm going to allocate an hour and a half to the stitch along, um, which the stitch along is called Quaker Snowflakes and I'm working it on 32 count Belfast linen, of all things, which has been a bit of a challenge for me. So if you're interested in joining our Stitch Alongs, you can check out our Discord community called The Stitchy Witch on Discord. And you can just sign up or literally just go in and create your own project, your own thread. Because we do like to see what everybody's working on. I think I've made a mistake now. That stitch shouldn't be there. Where should it be? So we've got one space there. See, it's so easy when you're talking to just miss one little step. Now, doing all these light, light stitches is why I chose antique white and not pure white or anything, because I would just never see these stitches on something lighter. So I don't have too many more to go in this square. And then I can start the next color and fill a little more in, which will probably be some more of the blues.
And you know what, with all this kind of blend of colours, if you were to make a mistake with one stitch, nobody's ever going to notice. It's not like a really drastic part of the, uh, the design. But having said that, I do try to be careful because it's not that the one stitch is going to make a huge difference uh, visually, but it's the, act, the fact that you might count wrong. And when, once you count wrong, it puts everything else counted wrong. That is the danger, I think. Just going to finish this stitch here. That is the worry that you make a mistake with one stitch and then after that you make a mistake with loads of stitches. And then we spend hours with that frog, which doesn't exactly help our moods. <laughs> which is kind of why I work in little sections and I don't go adrift that often because I would no doubt be entertaining that frog for hours if I was to just like kind of venture off down here. And I know that for a fact because it's happened to me a couple of times. Uh, before I was floss tubing, I had to frog a huge amount of my chart because I just ventured off and I'd made one little tiny mistake and it really wrecked so much of it that I very nearly gave up and I said this is not this is not going to work I can't just you know go off in any direction for ages because even with the grid I made a mistake but then I think some people have got a sharper eye much better at counting and for some reason they seem to be able to do it really well so It's really good if that's the case because it actually is quicker to get a piece done if you can do cross country. Now, what have I done here? I'm getting confused with this last line. Yeah, that is the last line because that's the first that's the last part of the square because I was saying that that dot is the next square. So there we are. Now, just to figure out where I part this, left and down. And that's my whole color complete in that square. So I hope to see you again soon. I might be doing my live on Saturday evening at seven. So I hope some of you can make it and join me in a little chatting and a little stitching. It's always fun. Keep me entertained whilst I stitch. So for now, I will say adieu and thank you so much again for watching and I will see you again soon.